Hey, what's going on guys? Today I want to cover the medication Famotidine, or brand name Pepsid. I'm sure many of you had heard about the recent issues with the drug Ranitidine, or brand name Zantac. If not, there has been some recalls and distribution halts due to the presence of a probable human carcinogen being found in these drugs. So for any of those patients that were taking Ranitidine before and are concerned, this drug Famotidine is a potential alternative treatment. I'll just be doing a quick review today. I'll cover how it works, warnings and precautions for famotidine, and also side effects. My name is Tyler and I'm a pharmacist with Pharmacy Update. And at the end of this video, I'll discuss a potential long-term side effect that you could have that is really not well known. Um, so let's get into it. First, I want to give an update on ranitidine and what's going on with it. The last update from the FDA was released on October 2nd. They basically said that they are testing ranitidine samples from many different manufacturers to see if this NDMA defect is due to certain manufacturing processes or if it's just ranitidine itself. They began testing the samples with a different method, this time testing them in higher temperatures that simulates digestion in the stomach. And the verdict so far is not a good one. They say that these higher temperatures have yielded, in their own words, very high levels of NDMA, and that is the probable cancer-causing defect. They said that this is just from early limited testing, and that the amount of NDMA in these samples is at unacceptable levels. However, they have not clarified anything beyond that. They still do not recommend people to stop ranitidine. This is the last update that we have received from the FDA. And I'm recording this video on 10-15 of 19, so it's been a couple weeks since we have gotten anything new. If any of you guys would like some more information on this topic, I'll leave the links to both of my videos below that discusses this, including the recall that was announced last month. Alright, so with all that being said, today I want to cover a possible alternative treatment, and that is Famotidine, or brand name Pepsid. So what makes this a good alternative? Well, it's in the same exact drug class as ranitidine. Uh, the drug class is known as the histamine 2 receptor antagonists. Um, you have H2 receptors in your stomach, and when these are activated, it causes release of more acid. So if you can block the stimulation of these H2 receptors in your stomach, you reduce the amount of acid being produced, and this lowers heartburn and other similar symptoms. Like ranitidine, it can be bought without a prescription over the counter, or your doctor can give you a prescription you can get from the pharmacy. And it does do a nice job of working quickly. You'll usually get the effect within the first hour of taking it, and it will provide relief for around 10 to 12 hours after that. But as always, if you're considering switching or taking famotidine, or any new drug for that matter, always be sure to speak with your doctor or pharmacist first, just to be on the safe side. Next, I want to cover just a couple warnings that you should be aware of if you take famotidine. First here is ECG changes, and this warning in particular is for patients with renal or kidney impairment. So famotidine can possibly cause what is known as a QT prolongation. This is when it takes your heart muscle a longer time to recharge between beats, and this possibly could lead to serious issues such as arrhythmias. There have also been reports of central nervous stimulation in the elderly population and possibly also for those who have renal impairment. And this would include things like confusion, disorientation, seizures, etc. So definitely use with caution if you're in one of these groups. And as I've already discussed, famotidine is eliminated through the kidneys. So if your kidneys are not working properly, you can get a buildup of famotidine in your body and you can have these issues and also possibly more side effects. At the very least, you will need a dose adjustment if you have kidney issues. And I do not discuss dosing in this presentation, but if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll try my best to get back with you. All right, now on to my next topic, and this is potential side effects of famotidine. And I have to say that overall, this drug is really well tolerated. A grand majority of people who take this drug will have no side effects at all. 
The most common side effect of famotidine is a headache, with around 5% of people experiencing this. Other possible side effects with uh, 2% or less include diarrhea, dizziness, and constipation. Now there have been reports of more serious side effects occurring, however these are very very rare, less than 1% of people will get these, and this is certainly not all the potential side effects you could experience, uh, just ones that I have decided to list. So really with any drug there is the risk of having an allergic reaction, and the most serious allergic reaction you can have is anaphylaxis. This is when your throat can start to swell up and make it difficult to breathe. Uh, if you ever get a reaction like this, just make sure you seek medical attention immediately uh, because it is an emergency. Another very rare side effect is Stevens-Johnson syndrome, which is a very serious skin reaction after taking a medication. And just a couple more that I listed here, uh, possibly decreased libido and hair loss. Again, just remember that these are not likely to happen to you. And again, I didn't list all the side effects because there was around 50 that were listed. Uh, but just a couple things to be aware of. Okay, now I want to move on to my final topic of the day. And that is a precaution for famotidine that you will want to be aware of. And this really goes for all H2 receptor antagonists, including ranitidine. So the Journal of the American Medical Association, abbreviated here as JAMA, came out with a study back in 2013 that showed an association between these drugs and vitamin B12 deficiency, and this is if you use the drug for more than two years. Now the belief is, is that this has something to do with lower amounts of stomach acid in general, uh, because PPIs also had an association with B12 deficiency that was actually stronger than the H2 receptor antagonists. And PPIs would include drugs like Prilosec and Nexium, which also decrease the production of stomach acid. This association was found to be stronger in female patients and also for people under the age of 30. So nothing to really freak out about if you don't take it on a regular basis. However, if this is something that you will be taking on a daily basis for multiple years, I would suggest at least getting your B12 level checked periodically. Or if you just want to supplement with B12 tablets, these can be purchased over the counter. But just something that you should be aware of if you plan on taking this drug, just keep an eye on your B12 levels. Well that's all I have for today guys, I want to thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for the latest pharmacy and medical updates. And I also post drug reviews such as this one. So thank you guys again and have a nice day.